All right, everybody, this is really happening. I know what you're thinking. What is that weird object in the ninja's background? It is a very slick piece of cardboard I actually found. I'm not gonna lie, this looks pretty cool. I've never seen these before, these weird pens, and they said they're erasable, I don't know. All right, guys, here's the deal. I got a special request from somebody, another fellow YouTuber, and uh, not exactly in the same space, but I thought this would be a good question to go over and use one of these fancy, uh, it's very weird, these boards. I don't know, if you know what it is, put it in the comment section. It's not like my normal cardboard, but uh, here it is. It's about real estate, guys. My daughter is getting married in July, and her and her fiance, both her and her fiance, are going to buy a home. I'm trying to tell them to extend their lease and wait until the housing market pops, but who listens to their mom anymore? Boy, ain't that the truth. You could throw dads into the uh, mix. Uh, Lisa, I know exactly what you mean. What does money put towards rent look like versus money put toward a home if you own in this current economy? Is there any exponential impact if they can wait to buy a home in a few months? What are the risks for waiting? Okay, that's a great question, Lisa. I love it, so here we go. So to the daughter of Lisa, I hope you're watching this. My name is The Economic Ninja. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you are thinking. You should check it out because I have amazing pictures. I'm gonna get to this in a second, okay? So first off, we're gonna talk about rent. Whew, I think I spelt rent right. All right, so rent, where does it go? A lot of people says it's going nowhere. It's like, blah, it's bad. Bad rent, right? Well, here's the problem. You gotta look at a few different uh, um, sides of rent. First off, how much is rent? What is rent relative to where you're living and how much you make? Do you enjoy where you live, first off? Do you uh, make enough to pay your rent? Okay, so that's one thing. Are you able to not only pay your rent with your income, but also are you able to live a good life, a fun life? Especially, and I have to say that very slow because I always say especially, uh, the facts are uh, when you're newly married, you want to enjoy being married. You don't want to already be compounding the stress of you know being house poor and all that kind of stuff, right? But you want to enjoy yourself. You want to go out with friends. You're still young. You have friends. <laughs> you haven't driven any of them crazy yet. But my point being, sorry about the humor, but I got to throw out some humor because uh, I remember what it was like. And a lot of people say that rent's going nowhere because you're not establishing uh, equity. Well, tell that to people that were renting from the years 2006 to 2009 and all of a sudden then found themselves in an amazing time because they were able to buy homes at about a sometimes 15 to 40% reduction because the housing bubble had popped in 2008. And just so you know, it hadn't popped only in 2008. It pops all the time. It actually pops about every seven to 10 years. Most people don't want to admit it, but it is absolutely true, okay? Now they pop these uh, things for various types of reasons, but the facts are the people that were renting during those times found themselves becoming homeowners, right? Very few jumped in, but they jumped in at the right time. Now, the other thing is, is when you're renting, are you able to save money? If you're able to save money for the down payment on your future home, that's a good thing, okay? So you have your quality of life and also the amount of money that you're able to save and invest for the future, okay? So that's very, very important. So in those kind of situations, I like rent. Now, here is where everyone always gets caught up. No matter what housing market you are in, whether it being a boom and it's exploding in price, or it's gradually going up, or it's collapsing in price. People ask me this all the time. When's a good time to buy? I said, there is always one good time to buy. And that is if you are planning on living in an area for quite some time because you have stable employment, or even if you don't have stable employment, you feel that the economy is doing well enough to where you can get into a house payment where your payment is equal to or less than your rent. Now, I don't, I'm not talking about tax write-offs at first. I'm talking about just the entire payment, the P-I-T-I, -I, okay? P-I-T-I, -I. that stands for your principal, your interest, your taxes and insurance. All of that together, okay? If that is equal to, or what's that, less than? Huh, I think I paid attention to school once. Less than rent, you're doing good. Why? Because if you were forced to leave because of a new job and you had to rent it out to someone else, a total stranger, you feel like, hey, I can rent it because I bought right. I bought it to where the payment is able to, the rent will cover the payment and possibly put some profit in my pockets, okay? And I don't like to factor in the tax write-off situation for uh, you know your mortgage insurance and things, 
because I want to build myself a safety box, a safety zone, okay? So as long as my PITI is equal to or less than what it costs to rent a place of the, of the same you know, size home or apartment or condominium, then I think that's a good thing. That's no matter if we're in a boom or a bust, all right? Because in a bust, actually, rents do go up. We'll talk about that some other time. All right, so here's your home. This looks really super cool. And I get it. The, the idea of a home, especially when you're a newlywed, is exciting and thrilling. There was nothing better than buying my first house. However, here's the thing. There's something called FOMO. And that is what most of the world is falling apart with right now. And it stands for the fear of missing out. Well, guess what? <laughs> that turns into something on the opposite side of a crash, and that is fear, panic, crying, and bankruptcy. And I, and I say that in a way to stress the point of this is a very serious situation. You want to uh, try and separate your feelings, your emotions of fear of missing out because you feel that you are going to lose out. And this is what everybody was talking about in 2004, 2005. Everybody. I heard the exact same uh, points from people's mouths. I heard the exact same and saw the same news stories. People are being priced out of the market. People have no chance. That's why uh, President Bush Jr. gave a famous speech at home. Affordability should be for everyone, so we're going to lower rates, blah, blah, blah. We all saw how that turned out. So we need to separate FOMO, our fear of missing out. That is the most important thing in my book, okay? So as, as glamorous as this looks, remember, we have to take very slow, methodical steps, logical steps to make sure that we are not spending more on the payment than we would be in rent, okay? Because if you are doing that, chances are likely that the rest of the population around you is doing the exact same thing, okay? And getting, it's getting worse and worse. All right, so now here, we're gonna come over here to money. I like money. I don't know where the camera is. See, this is what happens when you turn the camera not around so it's looking at you. I don't know if I'm in the frame or not. So let's pretend everybody's got this much money. Let's say that this is your monthly budget, okay? Let's just do this. Okay, so this is your monthly budget right here, and it's full. You're stoked. You've got, I got a ton of money right there, and inside there, I've got my car payment, I've got rent, and I'm, I'm going to explain here why I believe we're going to crash, okay? I've got food, and I've got Netflix because, come on, got to watch Gilmore Girls, right? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about it for you, not for me. So, Flix, Netflix, all this stuff, right? And you got money, you got plenty of money, right? So this is your savings right now. You are saving money. This is, all this equals up to here and you are saving. All right, well, here's the problem. We're gonna go back to 2004. See, in 2003, 2004, housing was booming. Everybody was excited. There were people buying rentals. I would go to the dentist and he'd talk about his rentals. Talk to my attorney, he was talking about his rentals. Everybody was super excited. Ironically, those are the people that told me that the housing uh, boom was over. You know, you know, Sonny, the housing has been exploding since 1994. You may not want to buy because we are just going through the uh, dot-com crash. The stock market was crashing, fell of almost 50% in value. And so everybody was laughing at me for buying homes to rent out. Well, by 2003, 2004, they're like, Ninja, now we get it. We should have been doing this all along. And they're part of the crowd, the herd, the sheep, okay? The 90% of uh, the world. And so uh, what was happening is they're buying up all this stuff and getting leveraged. And then something really interesting happened. A couple things started happening. So the interest, the percentage you paid on your mortgage started to rise, okay? Because the Federal Reserve did something called a dot plot plan. Said, we're gonna start normalizing interest rates. We're gonna bring them up. Well, that meant that uh, people's, mortgages went up, and all kinds of other things went up. And by 2008, we started seeing fuel get more and more expensive. So this is what happened. Every month or you know, quarter that things got more expensive with inflation, you had less money. Your money would start to come down here. You're like, oh, that's a bummer. Things are getting a little expensive. SUVs are getting expensive, all kinds of stuff. But then what happens is as the monthly budget starts to get attacked through inflation, through rising interest rates, things like that, you don't have money now for your Netflix. That was the first thing to go, even though they didn't have Netflix back then. But my point being is, every time your monthly budget got hit because you had less uh, disposable money, because it had to go to necessities, what happened is, you had less money to go out and spend into the real economy. 
that turns into a larger issue and people lose their jobs, things like that. Then they start to turn fearful and then all of a sudden the housing market didn't look so good and it started to dump, okay? Now, personally, and this is just my personal opinion, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just a dude with a bro hawk and a, and a dream. But my point is, is that right now everybody is vying for these homes and, 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 they're, and they're super excited. But the problem is, is there's very little inventory right now. Where there used to be a ton of homes for sale and the exact same thing happened in 2005 because as everybody's monthly budget kept getting hit through higher uh, prices, what happened is they started to fix up their houses and just stay because they didn't have the, the affordability to move out of this house because they didn't have the extra money to jump into another house, all right? Well, today they have, the, hey, this is a different thing. This time is different. Yeah, it's weird. They keep saying that every seven to 10 years, this time is different, but they can't learn. And everyone's afraid of big old hedge funds. Now I know what you're thinking. The, the drawing's amazing. It's abstract. The hedgies. Hedgies, hedges? I don't care, I can't spell. Point is the hedge funds. These guys, they don't have a lot of windows because they don't want you to see what they're doing. And the facts of the matter are right now, unlike any other time really in history, I mean, hedge funds and, and mutual funds, company, corporations, companies have invested in rental property throughout the ages, right, to make money. However, this time is different because these guys have really went, you know, something to the wall, okay? Because they went into overdrive because the Federal Reserve started lending money out at pretty much free. Just here, just take money and you go make money off of it. I'm not joking, it was at zero percent. It's crazy. And they started speculating. Well, they were having such a hard time finding a yield on their money, uh, they decided to dive into real estate. We saw Zillow dive in, all kinds of companies dive into buying real estate. Now here's the problem. Right now people are very confused. They say, yes, but Ninja, the, the really bad one, Black Rock. These are the big boys. These are the big boys on the block. They're gonna own it all. They're gonna take over the world. No, they're not, they're not. You wanna know why? It's because right now BlackRock is buying up real estate because it makes sense, because it's making money. But the problem is rents keep going up, housing prices keep going up, and now we're seeing mortgage prices keep going up, which means one thing. Oh, and we, all, we also have something we haven't seen in 40 years, inflation exploding. That is another key indicator that something's very wrong. So. These guys can only raise rents enough until people break, they snap, they stop paying. And then guess what? They could be the biggest dudes in the world. If they had a bunch of tenants not paying, they're losing money, losing money for their clients. So there's only so much that they can do, only so much that they can buy. And the point being is that for everybody that thinks that these guys are the biggest ones on the block, there was also a company called Lehman. There's a company called, uh, an institution called Bear Stearns. There's Enrons, there's all kinds of big companies that were big and great ones. Even in retail, the big giant used to be Kmart at one point. Now most people don't even know what a Kmart is, or Blue Light Special, or those amazing Subway sandwiches. Super sub. Point being is this, just because you're seeing a lot of people freaking out and FOMOing into real estate right now doesn't mean that it's always gonna be like that. Because the facts of the matter is there's always a rebalancing of scales. There is always a coming down. So what I would do if I were in your situation as a newlywed, first off, I would have a savings account with cash in it. I would have things that are outside of the, the fiat system as we uh, watch this entirely huge economic expansion experiment implode, like Mr. Rothschild said a few years back, because of uh, zero rates and negative rates and look into gold, Bitcoin, silver, things like that. Have a wealth chest of your own before you decide to jump right in. But again, with all of this said and this amazingly slick piece of cardboard that I'm using, my point being, your mom will fill you in. My point being is this, if you can buy a house with not a ton down, because anybody can make a property cash flow or have, you know, you know, oh yeah, sure, my uh, mortgage is cheaper than rent with a 50% down payment. But if, if you're able to get in with the minimum down and it be, you know, the same or less than rent, then yeah, go for it. But just know that if it falls, it's going to fall and be okay with it because you're okay with your purchase. Because, and the same thing happened to me in 2005. I bought a house. I knew I was buying a house at the top of the market. I sold all of my other properties except for three, three total I kept. In 2005, because I said, I don't care if it falls in half because I knew rent was gonna skyrocket and I wasn't gonna move, so it didn't matter. 
And here 12 years later, I sold it for a profit. A really nice one too. So I hope you got something out of this. I really appreciate you guys. For all my subscribers, I know you're looking at this board and going, what is the ninja doing? He usually, usually uses cardboard. Well, I thought I'd try something new. So here we go. The Economic Ninja is out.